So the new M3 MacBook Air is out. This is the 15 inch M2 MacBook Air, my powerhouse and my rock. I do everything on the channel from writing scripts to editing all the videos to designing thumbnails all on this computer. If you've got one of these, should you upgrade from this M2 to the new iteration in the M3? If you're looking for a visual difference, there's not much between the M2 and M3 versions. You're still getting it in the same colors, silver, space gray, starlight, and like this one, midnight. Although the M3 version of the midnight color is available with the new Adonis steel finish to reduce fingerprints. But despite that improvement, the same 15.3 inch liquid retina display, same dimensions, same awesome 18 hours battery life, same memory and storage options. But the most significant change is the heart of these machines, the chips and Apple has made significant strides with its M series chips. But it's those improvements between generations from M1 to M2 to M3 that will make features applicable to those individual chips more appealing for different types of users. This MacBook Air features the M2 chip based on the A15 Bionic from the iPhone 13, which was the leap forward from the M1. But what about the M3 and the new MacBook Airs? Does that have those same incremental improvements like the M2 does from the M1? Or would you be wasting your money upgrading from M2 to M3? Based on the A17 Pro chip from the iPhone 15 Pro, the M3 chip is built on a 3nm process compared to the M2's 5nm. Without boring you with percentages, smaller semiconductor chip means better performance and better power efficiency. But is that enough to justify an upgrade? For visual artists out there, the M3's GPU sees an improvement over the M2. So we're talking about dynamic caching, hardware accelerated ray tracing, and mesh shading, which means smoother renders, faster processing, and more time to let your creativity flow. We can see from these Apple charts that the M3 MacBook Air shows a slight improvement over the M2 version in video editing performance, but it's those more demanding GPU intensive tasks like image filters and effects, gaming, 3D rendering and AI image upscaling, where if you do get an M3 MacBook Air, these are going to be the areas that you're going to see the greatest improvement compared to its predecessor and compared to the M1, an even greater improvement shift. But as we know, when Apple first introduced their own silicon. Well, today we are incredibly excited to announce our first step in this transition with our first chip designed specifically for the Mac. And we call it M1 gap between the M1 and the Intel MacBooks was already substantial. And where the M3 chip is now, we're seeing massive differences across the board that essentially make you wonder if users who are able to afford an upgrade are still using their old Intel based MacBooks, why are they still using them and why aren't they upgrading? I do understand not everyone is a visual artist or video editor and the majority of users who do have one of these would probably describe themselves as an average user. If you're not pushing your MacBook to the limits with heavy video editing or 3D modeling, the M2 might still be your sweet spot, especially with its new lower price. And if you want something more from your MacBook, then why not just look at a MacBook Pro? And let's talk about hardware. Apple's innovation doesn't stop at the chip. The M3 MacBook Air brings support for two external displays when the lids close, although with the correct hub, link to that video below, you can get two external displays on this M2 MacBook Air. The other improvements are Wi-Fi 6E, a new free mic array with voice isolation and wide spectrum video modes. And for those who love the midnight finish, there's a new adenalization seal to reduce fingerprints, which is definitely one of the improvements that is much needed because I always feel like this MacBook Air never looks clean. While the new M3 MacBook Air should just be seen as a very low key refresh, who should consider the upgrade? Let's talk about Apple's grand strategy. Since the introduction of the M1 chip, Apple has been nudging users away from Intel-based MacBooks. The M1 marked the beginning of a new era, and with each new chip, Apple is solidifying its ecosystem around its own silicon. For those clinging onto their Intel MacBooks, Apple's message is clear. The future is Apple Silicon. With each Mac OS update, Apple is optimizing for its own chips. And while Intel Macs still receive support, the writing is on the wall for them. And it's time to embrace that seamless experience that Apple Silicon offers. If you're a professional whose work demands the latest and greatest, or you find your M2 lagging behind your workflow, then M3 is calling your name. If you're using your MacBook Air for everyday tasks and you're finding that this or your M1 MacBook Air is still meeting your need, without you ever thinking, I could do with more, then the M2 or M1 still has plenty to offer for you. On its own, the M3 MacBook Air is a technological marvel 
perfect for those who still need that cutting edge performance with that added portability and thinness. But remember, tech is all about what works for you. Weighing your needs, your workflow, and your budget before you decide. I myself upgraded to this from an M1 Mac Mini because I wanted the portability. And what I've also gained is that power, that efficiency that the M2 has brought to my workload compared to the M1. Would I upgrade from this to an M3 MacBook Air? Not at the moment. And that's generally because I'm not yearning for that increased power and the features that the M3 offers. But who knows what the future holds. Are you team M1, M2, M3, or are you still part of team Intel? Drop your answers in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.